Welcome to our video on discovering quadratics. Here are our objectives. We want to be able to understand the basic quadratic function and how quadratic growth works. And then we really need to understand how we can model data with quadratic functions because surprisingly enough, if you didn't know this, quadratic functions are probably the most common functions in the natural world. There are more things and more kind of common everyday important things that are modeled by quadratic functions than anything else. So understanding quadratics is very, very important. Consider the path created by a bouncing ball or a water fountain or a suspension bridge. Basically any projectile that is shot into the air at an angle will follow a trajectory that models a parabolic curve. And then now, <clears throat> instead of just modeling the path, if you want to model the height of any projectile, even something shot straight up in the air, something that goes straight up and comes straight back down, if you want to model the height of that function over time, that function is also a quadratic. So you can see right there that we've got a lot of examples of quadratics. The standard quadratic form is just ax squared plus bx plus c, where a cannot equal 0 because if a was 0, you'd have a linear function, right? You'd be back to bx plus c or basically mx plus b if you gave them different uh, numbers or sorry different names you'd see that it would be a straight line so a can't be zero anything else is fine it can be fractions decimals positive negative doesn't matter and then of course the more common name for the graphical representation of a quadratic function is a parabola some attributes of our parabolas if a is greater than zero the parabola opens up meaning you have a trough, right? It looks something like this, or it can be really wide or super narrow, right? Doesn't matter. They're all opening up, and then of course, opening down looks like that. Every parabola has a maximum or a minimum called the vertex, right? These would all be minimums, and this would be a maximum, and they're all called vertex. And they're symmetrical about the vertical line passing through the vertex, which that what that means is if you drew a, a vertical line, if I could draw a straight line today, the parabola should be symmetrical on each side of it, right? So if I draw a vertical line here, these two halves are exactly the same. They're mirror images. If you fold the paper, they would line up perfectly. So those are some of the really important attributes of parabolas. Helps them draw, helps us draw them, and helps us with other things. So if we're going to graph a quadratic function. We need to figure out if it opens up or opens down by looking at a. We need to find the vertex. The vertex is really easy. You just do minus b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. Very simple. So you take the negative value of whatever the b number is and divide that by 2 times a. That gives you the x piece. Take that number and plug it back into the original function to figure out what the y value is. And that's your vertex. You that's a little dot. And then if it opens up, you know it goes up from that dot. If it opens down, you know it goes down from that dot. Determine the intercepts if they exist. Right? You can find the x-intercepts. That's where x equals 0. right? Sorry, that's where y equals 0 because it's crossing the x-axis. So you set this thing equal to 0 and solve. Now, if you don't know how to factor and solve a quadratic, my advice is learn. It's very helpful in a lot of classes. If you just can't get it, you don't have the time, well, then you've got the lovely quadratic formula. Minus b plus and minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And look at what happens if you get rid of the entire uh, square root piece. You get minus b over 2a. Aha! Uh -huh. That's where it comes from. They're actually related. It's not, this isn't just a happy coincidence. It actually comes from that equation. So that'll help you both ways, kind of, if you know the quadratic formula, it'll help you remember how to find the vertex, and if you memorize how to find the vertex, it will help you a little bit memorizing the quadratic formula. But you use that to find the two x-intercepts. If they exist, they don't have to exist, right? You could have a parabola that looks like this. There's my x and y axis, and then my parabola is here. Never crosses, right? Or it's down here. Never crosses. So you could have parabolas with no intercepts, no x-intercepts.
you'll always have a y intercept because no matter where you put that thing parabolas get as wide as they have to be right because you can put all values for x in it so you can always put in x equals zero because that's what this vertical line is that's the point x equals zero because everything on the y-axis is where x equals zero right where it goes through the origin and if you plug in x equals zero you just get f of x equals c and so the y-intercept always exists, and you can find that very easily. So once you determine if it opens up or open down, opens down, you then get its vertex by doing minus b over 2a, plugging that back in and figuring out the y-value. Now you've got the little dot that's the vertex. You use the quadratic formula, or you um, factor it, or do whatever you got to do to find the x-intercepts, if they exist. You plug in 0 for x to find the y-intercept. You plot all of those dots right if they exist or not you know if the x's exist the y one you always plot and then once you have all those you basically just connect the dots once you know where the vertex is and where the y axis sorry the y intercept is then you can create a smooth curve that goes through those dots and it doesn't have to be hugely accurate right we're not we're not trying to win awards for accuracy with our graphs we just want to understand the, the basic shape of what's going on so here's a simple example y squared minus 6x minus 7, very simple. Since a, right, the number in, in front of here is just a 1, we know it opens up. We can find the vertex by using minus b over 2a. So we take minus b, which is 6, divided by 2 times 1, 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we get 3. Right, we take that 3, we plug it back in. So plug it in for x, square it, right? Minus 6 times it, minus 7, do all that work, you get negative 16. Now you have the vertex 3, negative 16. All right. Next thing we want to do is figure out if there are any x-intercepts. So if we can, we try to factor. See how much faster that is than using the, the quadratic formula? You, when you factor, you always know it's going to be two little linear terms. You know that the x pieces have to multiply to give you x, whatever the x squared is, and these two numbers have to multiply to give you this number at the end. Since there's a 1 in front of this, we know it has to be x and x. If there was like a 2, we know it has to be 2x and x. If there was a 3, it had to be 3x and x. If there's a 4, then we're kind of screwed because it, either, it could either be 4x and 1 or 2x and 2. And it just means we have a lot more things to try. Also, because 7 is prime, we know that our only options are 7 and 1, right? One of them has to be negative and one has to be positive because when they multiply together, they have to give you a negative 7. If this was a positive 7, this could either be negative, negative, or positive, positive, right? So you get a lot of options in these things, and it can feel like, oh, there's just way too many things to try. No, it's pretty easy, and you can go through them pretty quickly once you understand the basic concepts of uh, factoring quadratics. And I have videos out there to help you with factoring quadratics if you want to learn. Okay, so if you don't want to factor it, throw it into the quadratic formula, but in either case, you get the two x-intercepts are 7 and negative 1. Then you plug in 0 for x, and you get that the y-intercept is negative 7. You plot those dots, right, the vertex, the y-intercept, the two x-intercepts, and it's just a matter of connecting the dots. There you have it. All right, there's the quadratic formula again that we were talking about. You can use that whenever you can't factor whether because it's not easily factorable or if you're just not good with that skill yet. Here is a very common um, quadratic function, and it's the height of an object. Remember I told you that we can model the height of a projectile, any object that's pushed upward, so fired vertically or whatever. And it doesn't even have to be vertically, right? It can be fired at, at any angle. But if it's fired at an angle, you have to make some adjustments. But it still ends up being roughly the same thing. Just know that anything that is shot up in the air, you can model the height by a quadratic. And it normally looks something very similar to this. Sometimes the negative 16 changes. It just depends on um, if you're doing everything in feet per second or miles per hour or um, meters per second. It depends on, on what your uh, velocity is. It'll change that uh, 16 to something else. But it's always going to be negative something t squared plus that's called we call that um, v naught or v sub zero t and then y naught or y sub zero those are just initial velocities and initial position right so v sub zero means initial velocity v for velocity and then y sub zero just means your initial y and your initial y is your initial height right where did it start off so if something was fired vertically upward from a height of 400 what was your initial height 400 
and it was shot with an initial velocity of 750. So that's what V sub 0 is. If we plug all those things in, we get negative 16t squared plus 750t plus 400. Simple, 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 right? And now that we have that, we can answer all sorts of questions, like um, what's the maximum height it reaches? Well, isn't the maximum height just the vertex, right? And isn't the vertex just minus b over 2a? And then you plug that in to get the y value. So you would do negative 750 over negative 32. Do the math, you know, get about 20 something, plug it in and get an actual height for how high it gets. Um, we could ask how long it takes to hit the ground. Well, when it hits the ground, the height is equal to zero. So we set this equal to zero and solve, which means we have to either factor it or use the quadratic formula. Um, all sorts of things, right? Uh, how long does it take to get to a height of blank? We'll put that in for the height, then move it over here because you have to set it equal to zero because the only way to solve a quadratic is setting it equal to zero, right? Then you quadratic formula, blah, blah, blah. So you can see you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Set it equal to zero using the quadratic formula or finding the vertex to find its maximum height. It's very simple. Okay, um, if we're trying to determine when the projectile will be more than 6,000 feet above, then aren't we just setting that thing to greater than 6,000? And if we look at the picture, it's kind of like, when is it above this line of 6,000? And we can see that it looks like it hits there, oh, about 9-ish, right? Because if this is 10, and there's one, two, three, four blocks, and each block is two and a half, or we're, we're right in the middle, so it's about one or so down, so it's about nine, and then a little bit more than, what is that, 38-ish? Uh, but we could do the math and actually calculate it exactly. If we start with this and set it equal to zero, we can then determine when the projectile will hit the ground. And we saw from the picture that it looks like it hits at about 40, 48 ish, 47 ish, right? Somewhere around there. Again, we could do the math to find the exact value if necessary by using the quadratic formula because this thing is not going to factor nicely for most, you know, most numbers. So you put everything into the quadratic formula, you get your plus and minus pieces, and you know, you could actually work those out and get your decimals and see that t could either be negative 0.527 seconds or about 47.4 seconds. Since it's impossible to be negative, and why can't it be negative? Well, because you can't have negative time. That'd be like going backwards in time. Then the only logical answer would be a little bit more than 47 uh, seconds, which we saw from the graph. All right, try this skill check. All right, if it's shot from a height of 1,200 and 620 feet per second, see if you can write the quadratic and then determine how long the projectile will be in flight, i.e., how long does it take to hit the ground. Well, hopefully you figured out this one. Very simple, and it took 40.6. One last skill check. If we have this function that models the mileage of a car, where x is the speed in miles per hour, can you determine what speed the, the car will attain its maximum number of miles per gallon? So you basically want to maximize miles per gallon for a certain speed. So aren't you trying to find the vertex? Because this is a negative number. We know it opens down. So we know we're trying to find the vertex because whatever the vertex is, that'll be the maximum. So see if you can find the vertex for this. Did you get 42? Remember the vertex is minus b over 2a and then if you plug that back in that will tell you what the actual maximum uh, maximum mileage is but that's not what they were asking for they were asking for the speed so they just wanted you to find the first part the minus b over 2a all right that's it for this